subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Okay, so we've already looked at classification of systems uh, according to linearity, time invariance and causality of systems and we discussed that we are interested only in linear, time invariant and causal systems because only mathematical modeling of such systems is possible. Although there are a few uh, more classification that we are going to see according to memory, according to stability and so on, right. So the next classification, the classification we are going to see today is static and dynamic systems or memory systems with memory or memory less systems. So uh, how are we doing this classification is if a system has arrangement of memory, if a system can depend on past and present inputs then it is going to be known as a dynamic system. If the system has an arrangement of memory, it can store past inputs then we are calling it as dynamic input system. Whereas if a system depends only on the present inputs then we are calling it as static input. See we are not going to confuse it with causal and non-causal systems. Why? Causal system was the one which depended only on present or past input whereas non-causal was one which depended on future input. This is not the same with static and dynamic. This depends on memory arrangement of the system. If the system is having memory, we are calling it as dynamic system. If, it, if it depends on instantaneous inputs only, present inputs only, then we are calling it as static system. Okay. <clears throat> so we are taking some examples to explain it better. Right, so we are going to look at them one by one. Now see, this system, the first system that we have taken here depends on xt only, only on the present value of the input. So this is going to be a static system, static since this depends only on the instantaneous value of the input, this is going to be a static system. Right, but look at the second example. Now this system should have an arrangement of memory since its output depends on a value of input which occurred in past which occurred at t is equal to 5. This is a past value of input. Since the output depends on some past value of input, this must have arrangement of memory and this is going to be a dynamic system. Right, this is not a memory less system. This is a memory less system. Why? Because the output depends only on the present value of the input. Although this is not a linear system, but right now we are just talking about static and dynamic. So this is going to be a static system. Similarly, this is also going to be a static system. Now this integrator, this integrator is a dynamic system. Why? Because you need all the past values of the input to calculate the present output. So this is also going to be a dynamic system. Right? So just based on which values of input the output is dependent upon we are classifying systems as static and dynamic. Okay. Uh, now we are considering an example where the system is non-causal as well as dynamic. See if I uh, take a system classified like this. Now since the output depends on future values of the input, this is going to be a non-causal system, non-causal since the output depends on future values of the input. Also this is going to be a dynamic system, why? Because this system must have arrangement of memory, right? Because it is storing values from minus 5 to 5. So this is a system which is non-causal as well as dynamic, okay? Causalities of a system and memory of a system are two different concepts, okay? Don't confuse. So now the next classification that we are looking at is stable and unstable systems. Stable and unstable systems. Uh, now there are various criteria to describe to just uh, justify the stability of a system. The criteria that we are using here is BIBO stability, BIBO stability, right? This is bounded input, bounded output. This BIBO is bounded input, bounded output. So what does this stand for? This means that if you are providing an input xt, xt 
to a system okay this is a system suppose then if this input is bounded what does a bounded input means that is its value is occurring only between some fixed values some fixed numbers okay suppose this is occurring only between minus n and n some fixed intervals okay 0 to n maybe whatever if this input is bounded then the output must be bounded this must be bounded this yt this is how we are defining bounded input bounded output stability for any bounded input output must be bounded okay look at some examples let us see fine now look at the first example what are we checking is if this input is bounded if this lies between some fixed values is y going to lie between some fixed values yes why because if this xt lies between some minus n and n then is y is also going to lie between minus n plus n and n plus n so this is going to be a stable system since if xt is bounded see we, we guarantee that this input is bounded okay if, if the input is also not bounded if this is something exponential function then we cannot guarantee for y okay we are checking that if this input is bounded whether output is bounded or not right now look at this second one see value of e is approximately 2.7 2 uh, power some xt now if this xt is bounded if xt is having some fixed value then power of 2.7 to some fixed value is also going to be some bounded value so this function is also going to be stable function similarly this one okay if this xt lies between some fixed values n minus n then its square is also going to lie between some fixed values only so it's also going to be a stable system now look at this one we are multiplying this xt with sin t when you multiplying this with sin t what happens is this going to continue this sin t is a non-bounded signal okay although its value lies between minus 1 and 1 only but this is going to continue till infinity right so this makes the signal unbounded this y is going to become unbounded this is going to be a non-stable system similarly one more example you can consider t into xt okay now here even if this xt is bounded multiplying with t is going to make it unbounded so this is also going to be a non-stable system so this is how you're defining stability of a system by using the criteria of bbo stability bounded input bounded output right okay so now the last classification that we are looking at is invertible and non-invertible systems invertible and non-invertible systems now what are invertible systems if you are supplying some input xt to a system okay if i am giving input xt to a system and obtaining output yt then if such a system exists if any system ti exists such that if I supply this as input to this system, it gives me back my original input as output. Okay, if any system Ti exists such that on giving Yt as input to this system, we can obtain output as Xt, then this system T is going to be called as invertible system. If we cannot form such a system, then this system is going to be non-invertible. Okay, uh, see, suppose I have a system like this, Yt is equal to 4xt right now if i form one system yit equal to xt by 4 now if i give this output as input to this system i am going to obtain xt again so this system is going to be invertible this is an invertible system right now there are two conditions that we are going to check for a system to be invertible first condition is two different two unique inputs should not yield the same output two different or unique inputs should not yield same output right and second condition is any non zero input any 
non zero input should not yield should not yield zero output if any system satisfies these two condition then we can call it as an invertible system now why are we taking these two conditions suppose consider a square square function okay suppose i am having y t is equal to x square t now this function is not going to be invertible why because even if i put here plus x t or minus x t plus x t and minus x t both are going to yield the same output of x square t both are going to yield the same output x square t when we are given them as input to this system now when i try to design its inverse system what do i do its inverse system for this is going to be square root okay x t is going to be plus minus root of y t now we are not obtaining a unique output okay we are obtaining two outputs for one input which cannot be mathematically modeled okay which is not true mathematically that is why this kind of system is non invertible okay uh, one more example we are considering suppose we have a differentiator dxt now this is also not a this is also not a invertible system why because see differentiation of xt is also going to be x dash t and differentiation of a plus xt is also going to be x dash t two different inputs yield same output that is why this system is not invertible why because when you are inversing this which one are you going to go okay this is this is uh, many to one mapping which is not possible for a function that is why this system is not going to be a invertible system now look at the second condition non zero input should not yield zero output now see suppose you have a system like this y t is equal to t x t now if if x0 is not equal to 0 if x0 is not equal to 0 what happens y of 0 is going to be 0 into x of 0 which is 0 now a non zero input x0 was not zero which means that input was non zero yielded a zero output therefore in obtaining inverse of the system is not possible because some of the inputs have been lost while mapping lost because of the system that is why these kind of systems are not invertible okay so to check if the system is invertible or not you just need to check these two conditions right uh, now look at some examples right look at the first example see here no two different uh, inputs are going to yield the same output also non zero input is not going to give zero output so this is going to be a invertible system invertible and if i ask you what is going to be the inverse system then you can say that inverse system is going to be y t by 4 okay fine this is also going to be an invertible system and what is going to be its inverse system x of t by 3 this is a time compressor so inverse system is going to be time expander right now integration is a inversible system see why because this is this has limits from minus infinity to t this these limits of any function are defining time varying area of the signal time varying area of the function that is why this is going to be an inverse signal invertible system if the limits were from 0 to t or minus infinity to in infinity any other limits except these this would have been a non invertible system now what is going to be the inverse system of this differentiator right this is going to be a non invertible system why because a non zero input is also going to yield a zero output at t is equal to 0 at t is equal to 0 y t is going to be 0 even if x t is not 0 so a non zero input yields a zero output so this is going to be a non invertible system non invertible fine so uh, these were all the classifications that we had studied about systems thank you